In this video, I'm going to solve these four questions. So let's get started with the first one. If x follows binomial with 5 comma p such that probability that x equal to 1 is this and probability that x equal to 2 is this, then we have to figure out the value of p. The first thing that you need to note over here is that a binomial has two parameters. Okay. So it has two parameters and those two parameters are n and p. And whenever a random variable follows a binomial distribution, the general way of writing is x follows binomial with n comma p as the parameters. So that means this 5 that you see over here, this is actually the value of n. Okay. And because x follows a binomial distribution, we know that the probability that x is equal to a particular value. So this r that I have written over here, this signifies a particular value that this random variable can take. The formula that we have to find this probability is n c r p raised to the power r 1 minus p raised to the power n minus r. Okay, where this r is this particular value that we have written over here. So I'm going to use this same formula now. So we are given the probability that x equal to 1 is 0 0.4096. So this means we can write probability that x equal to 1. This is equal to 5c1 because n is equal to 5 and this number is 1 over here. So this 1 comes over here. p raised to the power 1 and 1 minus p raised to the power 5 minus 1. Okay. So this is one expression that we have and we know that this is equal to 0.4096. Now let's solve this further. So this implies 5c1 can be written as 5 factorial divided by 1 factorial multiplied by 5 minus 1 factorial. This is the formula that we have for this. p raised to the power 1 and 1 minus p raised to the power 4 and this is equal to 0 0.4096. This implies 5 multiplied by 4 factorial divided by 1 multiplied by 4 factorial. P 1 minus P raised to the power 4 is equal to 0 0.4096. This and this gets cancelled. This implies that 5P 1 minus P raised to the power 4 is equal to 0 0.4096. And I'm going to call this equation number 1. Okay, so we were given this information in the question. Using this information, we have got this equation number one. Similarly, I'm going to use this piece of information that's given in the question. And using this piece of information, I'm going to find one more equation in terms of P. So let's do that. So we are given some information related to this. And we know that we can write probability that x equal to 2 is equal to 5C2 P raised to the power 2 1 minus P raised to the power 5 minus 2. And we are given in the question that this value is equal to 0 0.2048. So this is equal to 0 0.2048. This implies 5c2 can be written as 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial, 5 minus 2 factorial. p square 1 minus p cube equal to 0 0.2048. This implies 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial which can be written as 2 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 3 factorial p square 1 minus p cube is equal to 0 0.2048 this and this gets cancelled and 2 times 2 is 4 so we get 10 p square 1 minus p cube is equal to 0 0.2048 Okay, so this is the second equation that we have. So I've written the first equation over here. This is the first equation. The second equation is 10p square 1 minus p cube is equal to 0 0.2048. So basically we have two equations in terms of p and now we just have to solve these two equations to find the value of p. So let's see how can we do that. So to solve for the value of p, I'm going to divide equation number 2 by equation number 1. So I'm going to do 2 divided by 1. This implies 10p square 1 minus p cube divided by 5p 1 minus p raised to the power 4 
and on the right hand side we have 0 0.2048 divided by 0 0.4096 okay this and this gets cancelled right and over here we can write 2 and this and this gets cancelled so on the left hand side we get 2p divided by 1 minus p and on the right hand side this becomes 1 divided by 2 so after cross multiplying we'll get that 4 times p is equal to 1 minus p and this implies that 5p is equal to 1 which means that p is equal to 1 divided by 5 that is equal to 0 0.2 okay so part number d 0 0.2 is the right answer so let's move to the next question the probability density function of x is given as this for x greater than 0 we have to find the value of a first of all note that we are dealing with a continuous random variable over here as you can see it can take any value greater than 0 and to find the value of a we are going to use this condition over here so for f of x to be legitimate pdf it must satisfy the following two conditions so these are the two conditions let's use the second condition that's written over here so this implies for this question we can write that the integration of fx dx should be equal to 1 and the values over here are going to range from 0 to infinity because that's all the values that x can take so this implies integration of this function a e raised to the power minus x by 5 from 0 to infinity dx should be equal to 1 and because a is a constant so we can write this expression as a integration of e raised to the power minus x by 5 dx equal to 1 now see the only tricky thing that we have in this question is this integration over here i'm assuming that you do know your basics of integration from your math module so if i'm going to integrate this so i'm going to get first of all the same thing that is e raised to the power minus x by 5 and then this will be divided by minus 1 by 5 okay so the integration of this expression is this expression and over here we have 0 and infinity this is equal to 1 so this can be written as note that we have a minus sign in the denominator so the expression will have a negative sign now and there is 1 by 5 in the denominator so that means in the numerator now we will have 5 so this becomes minus 5 multiplied by a and this is e raised to the power minus x by 5 0 infinity equal to 1. So this implies minus 5a e raised to the power minus infinity by 5 minus e raised to the power minus 0 by 5 is equal to 1. This implies that minus 5a so e raised to the power minus infinity by 5 will remain e raised to the power minus infinity and e raised to the power minus infinity can be written as 1 divided by e raised to the power infinity e raised to the power infinity is going to be infinity and 1 divided by infinity is going to be 0 okay so from here i can write that this is equal to 0 so 0 minus the second term is e raised to the power minus 0 by 5 so this will just remain 0 and anything raised to the power of 0 is 1 so over here we will have 1 and this is equal to 1 so this implies that minus 5a multiplied by minus 1 is equal to 1 so 5a is equal to 1 and this in turn implies that a is equal to 1 divided by 5 which is 0 0.2 that means the right answer is part number c 0 0.2 let's move to the next question if A, B and C are mutually exclusive and exhaustive events associated with a random experiment and if probability of B is equal to 3 by 2 probability of A and probability of C is equal to 1 by 2 probability of B then we have to figure out what is the probability of A. First of all note that we are given that these three events are mutually exclusive so this implies that the probability of A intersection B is going to be 0 the probability of b intersection c is also going to be 0 the probability of a intersection c is also going to be 0 and the probability of a intersection b intersection c is going to be 0 okay and this is happening because we are given that these three events are mutually exclusive note that these are also exhaustive events so because these events are exhaustive that means the probability of a union b union c will be equal to 1 okay 
Now let's see what can we get from here and then we will use this information to figure out the probability of A. Now we know the formula that probability of A union B union C is equal to probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C minus probability of A intersection B minus probability of B intersection C minus probability of A intersection C plus probability of A intersection B intersection C. Now note that this is 0, this is 0, this is 0 and this is 0. So these four terms will go away and we will be left with probability of A union B union C is equal to just the addition of these three probabilities. So we get that this is equal to probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C and we are already given that this is equal to 1. Okay, so from here, we know that the probability of A union B union C is going to be equal to 1. That means the sum of these three probabilities is equal to 1. Now, let's see the other information that we are given in the question. We are given that probability of B is 3 by 2 probability of A. So, instead of probability of B, I can actually write 3 by 2 probability of A. We are also given that probability of C is equal to half probability of B. So, instead of probability of C, I can write half probability of B and this is equal to 1. Now note that our purpose is to figure out probability of A. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to substitute for this probability of B because once we do that, we will have the entire expression in terms of probability of A. So now we get probability of A plus 3 by 2 probability of A plus 1 by 2. Instead of this probability of B, I'm going to write 3 by 2 probability of A. So this is 3 by 2 probability of A and this is equal to 1. So this implies probability of A plus 3 by 2 probability of A plus 3 by 4 probability of A. This is A over here. The sum of these three is equal to 1. So now I can take probability of A as common and this is 1 plus 3 by 2 plus 3 by 4 equal to 1. This implies I can take LCM over here, which is going to be 4. So this is 4 plus 6 plus 3, and this is equal to 1. This implies that probability of A multiplied by 13 by 4 equal to 1, which implies that probability of A is equal to 4 by 13. Okay, that means the right answer is part number A, 4 by 13. So A is the right answer. Let's move to the next question. Find x and y so that the following ordered data set has a mean of 42 and a median of 35. Okay, so we are already given that the mean is 42 and median is 35. In total, we have 10 observations over here. So these are 10 observations and these are ordered. Okay, and we have to figure out the values of x and y. So let's see how can we solve this. So we are given that mean is equal to 42. That means the sum of all of these terms, okay, divided by 10 is equal to 42. So 17 plus 22 plus 26 plus 29 plus 34 plus x plus 42 plus 67 plus 70 plus y divided by 10 because that's how you calculate mean. This is equal to 42. This implies if I add all these terms instead of x and y, then I'll get 307. So the left hand side will become 307 plus x plus y divided by 10 equal to 42. This implies 307 plus x plus y equal to 420. And this implies that x plus y equal to 420 minus 307. And this is 113. Okay, so we have got one equation in terms of x plus y. This equation is x plus y equal to 113. I'm going to mark this equation as equation number one. We are also given one more piece of information which is related to the median that the median is 35. But before I take a look at the median part, let's see if we can figure out the answer by just using this equation. Okay, so from equation number one, we know that x plus y is equal to 113. So in part number A, we are given that x is 35 and y is 71. If you add these two, then you will get 106. Okay, so A cannot be the right answer. In the part number B, if you add these two values, then you will get 113. 
So this can be the right answer. Now let's see if there is any other part as well, which is also giving us 113. So in part number C, we are going to get 109. So the sum of these two is 109. And in part number D, the sum of these two is 108. So it's actually quite clear from here that the right answer is going to be part number B because x plus y has to be 113. However, for the sake of completion, let me also utilize the second piece of information to figure out this answer. So we are given that median is 35 and the total number of observations that we have are 10. So when you have even number of observations, then the median is actually the average of the middle two observations. Okay. And the middle two observations over here are 34 and X. Note that the data is already ordered. So we don't have to order it. So we can just see that the middle two observations are going to be 34 and X. That means the median is going to be the average of 34 and X. So median is equal to 34 plus X divided by two. And we are already given that median is equal to 35. So this implies that 34 plus X is equal to 70. And this implies that X is equal to 70 minus 34. So X is 36. And because X plus Y is equal to 113, if X is 36, then Y is equal to 113 minus 36, which is 77. Okay. So the right answer is X equal to 36 and Y equal to 77, which is your part number B.